Wow, 3D printing farms. Yeah, <clears throat> a lot of fun this year. Uh, last year was uh, absolutely, I, I, I have to admit, it was amazing. Well, I finally got the 3D printer shut down, so now we can uh, talk a little bit. Wanted to share some of the things, I guess, that I learned uh, in this past year. It was our first big year of really pushing 3D printing on the online part, as opposed to just feeding some clients some custom orders or something. And uh, it looks really good, but I just had a friend whose business is shutting down after 28 years of, you know, really being a uh, growing business has just collapsed underneath them. But they realized they were, in the last two years, they saw that it was sort of spiraling out of downward. And I was thinking about 3D printing. And right now, a lot of people are starting to get, get into this and they're, they're gathering up. I'm seeing farms, some of them are 100 machines, 200 machines, you know, more than that. And I'm thinking that in long term, I'm wondering how much lifespan we actually have to this kind of market right now and how it's going to shift or change because that's what happens to a lot of businesses over time. Markets shift or swing into something else and pretty soon, boom, you know, you may as well close the doors. And 3D printing, I think right now is hot and I think there's still a lot of room for expansion. There's a lot of, you know, there's a gazillion products out there that can be made with 3D printing that can be sold to people that want those products. So it's really, it's a good thing right now. It looks great, you know, but I'm wondering time-wise, and I'll, I'll see if I can get some comments flying. How many years do you think there is in the uh, lifespan of like 3D printing farms, that kind of thing? I'm thinking about right now, I'm looking at it and thinking the market to me looks like about, I'm going to give it say 10 years. And I think that's about where the market is going to start to collapse on 3D print farms. But it's really hard. It's 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 a tough one. It's a really interesting but tough one because this past year I thought that the market was already sort of you know saturated and that like there isn't that much more room to move around. And I quickly discovered oh no, there is a lot more you know that can be done out there than what we're doing. And there's still probably you know so many products that can be made and manufactured by 3d machines that can be sold to people that want those products that it's like yeah this is this is uh, I think I, I think if we were to put it on a chart it's still you know on the increase it's on the climb still right now I don't know where the failure point will be or where it'll drop off and I also maybe I get some comments too I'm wondering if it's gonna like run off a cliff you know and just sort of drop on that chart or whether 3d printing will just slowly kind of taper down slowly as uh, more and more homes get 3d printers or personal printers and then they realize that they can go online or with their phone or something and just go get an stl file for whatever they want put it in the machine and make it and at that point the stl file might cost either free or you know 98 cents or something to download and then they can make the product they want or something with their machines and I, I you know somewhere in the future I sort of see that's you know kind of what's happening but uh, the <clears throat> this whole thing is still not what I would call uh, plug-and-play like totally user friendly you still have to learn a few things and uh, in my case I designed my stuff on Fusion 360 and then put it together and I also have a couple of other CAD programs that I use, but I design and build these things and then sell them. They're custom products. They're not something that just anybody, you know, can get an STL file and make it or something. So I'm not saying I'm protected because nobody is in, the, in this situation, but uh, it's a good situation for the moment. But down the road, I think it's going to be very different. Biggest problem I had this year uh, was uh, getting filament in. Uh, and it's really, it was like, it should be it should be like at first this the beginning of last year was like well i'll just order a spool it's here the next day at the door and by that evening we're printing up you know products and stuff and slowly it got to the point where it was like okay this product is this this filament is taking two days to get here i'm running out of filament we've got a problem you know and sort of i started alter you know altering this and saying okay let's order two and three spools of this of each color and that way I'm, I'm covered and uh, quickly found out again that you you run out of this color but not that color and again a problem with ordering and getting the filament in right away and also what's available at the other end uh, now just this past week unfortunately hit a big glitch ordered from Amazon <laughs> and Amazon shocked me I've usually I get it overnight or the next you know you know yourself like the next day and Amazon truck pulls up boom you know there's your order 
uh, all of a sudden they're like a week behind or something, you know, getting the stuff to me. And I understand there's a strike, so I'm not sure how that affects, how what kind of effect that has overall. I understand it's a strike, so that means things are going to take longer to get here, you know, than they should. But uh, I am shocked at, you know, uh, how bad, you know, things have gotten uh, with Amazon because it's like now I can't even trust them because they told me overnight or something and then two days later they said, oh, it's shipping now. Shipping from where? I don't know. And they're saying, well, maybe by Saturday of next week you'll have it. Like, I can't wait that long. So I went ahead and ordered uh, from other companies such as Polymaker. It was one of the places I ordered from. And I also... Uh, Excuse me. And I also ordered from uh, Amazon, but I checked thoroughly to make sure that what I was ordering had that, you know, next day delivery kind of thing in that clause and that there was X amount in stock. So when I ordered it, I would get it kind of thing. And I am having a little bit of a, an issue with that. And so one of the things I'm learning here, and I think this year we're going to start up, I'm going to start looking at five kilogram spools instead of these uh, small regular spools that we buy especially in certain colors that we use a lot of it's like you may as well have a five kilogram spool of that here it'll save you a little bit of money per you know per kilogram and at the same time we'll have a larger amount on demand you know ready to go for demand problems because uh we've had some weekends where all of a sudden we got crushed with you know orders uh and then all and then you, know, you might have a lull for two or three days and it would be like the machines are sitting doing nothing big mistake because what you find out is these machines might be sleeping temporarily but all of a sudden they're running you know 24 hours a day for three or four days to try to catch back up sort of thing because you were slammed you know with a bunch of orders so it's been an interesting uh learning experience the other problem i had this past year too and it's uh, still a concern so i'm going to try to get a machine in that i'll show to you guys once i get it in it's going to be a, a big machine i guess but uh, one of the problems I'm having is uh, the machines, I had two of the big machines, which are the 300 by 300 plate, they failed and they broke down technically and I had to do repairs. Well, that can set you back uh, sometimes in this case, maybe a day or two. Uh, when the wiring broke off of this one, I took the plate off, made a huge mistake, threw the plate on the workbench, soldered the connections back together, put it back online. Yeah, it's working, okay, start printing. And the next print was miserable. It was a mess. It wasn't stuck to the bed right. There was curls and all kinds of craziness going on with it. And I suddenly realized after about a day, you know, I had thrown that plate on a workbench. My workbench is covered in cutting oil and junk. So I didn't clean the plate. <laughs> so I took some alcohol, cleaned the plate, and all of a sudden, oh, we're back to printing normal again. But I wasted... Uh, a good chunk of filament to, before I realized, yeah, you know, you need to clean this plate because of what you did, you know, and it was like, I can't believe I didn't, you know, realize, you know, you can't just throw that plate back on. You need to clean it after you've done that. Uh, I got the uh, leveling and everything. I'm like a science with that thing. So I, I put it on, I can level a plate, no problem. But, you know, skipping that step of not cleaning it afterwards was, was just, oh man, talk about, I was in a rush, you know, I was in a hurry. We need to get production out, need to get back on it, and then realize, you know, big, bad mistakes. So, yeah. So, the other thing was uh, that I, I found is like having a backup. This is just a backup machine, this $30 piece of junk. It's not a CR-10. Uh, I think maybe a trunks he had something to do with this one early, you know, in, in years back or something. Maybe I'm really still don't, haven't been able to find where this thing came from, but uh, it is a backup machine. So, the main machines still doing its job but it broke down and it had some problems and that became disturbing because again you got to troubleshoot a 3d printer and it was like i don't know what's wrong let's find out and try to figure out what what's going wrong or why is the machine suddenly having a problem where it you know uh my one machine started stopping in mid print for no particular reason and throwing an error code and stuff it's the same sdl file it's the same sd card you know there's nothing new here. All of a sudden, it's doing this to me. And uh, so I had to do quite a bit of work on that machine. And uh, it was just the way the filament feeds in was somehow tripping the uh, sensor that it was out of filament. And it was like, you know, I, I don't even know how the heck that's happening. And then another problem I ran into was uh, one of the cables was brushing the uh, flat cable that feeds the signal from the SD card. And again, it was 
you know, just touching it enough that it would, every once in a while, just out of the blue, it would knock it off kind of thing. So I had to move that cable away so can't have any disturbances like that. Uh, had some different issues. This one has broke down. Even this little cheaty right now I just used, uh, it has had failures where, you know, I've had to go in and rip the uh, extruder out and replace it. And if you have a little farm, you you don't have a choice. It's like, I got to fix this so I can get back to production. You know, we, we just, we can't just sit back and say, oh, well, you know, that's, oh, that's it. We'll just, you know, we'll just give up. I'm like, no, keep going, you know, keep trying, I think, as they say. Well, I uh, also have another machine over here we're running right now, and I also have one in my house running right now. So, yeah, don't worry. There's, believe me, there's 3D printers running. You know, they're just not sitting here in front of us right now. In fact, this one has a job to do right now, but I'm holding off until we finish videotaping, and then I'll put the job on there and get it going. That one, the only thing it's waiting for is... That's the only spool of uh, filament I've got left on that for that color right now. So uh, I've got some coming in. Should be here between now and Saturday or something. So, oh, great. So in the meantime, I can't run the machine because I just, I'm not going to take a chance. Uh, what I do is I stock up a certain amount and I have like, you know, two and three of everything in order ready to go. But if something, you know, if we get behind like this situation here, We've got that now if those two sell then I know which one sell I know which one I need to start printing right away So we can print I guess you could say ahead of time Before the last order comes through where it's like we have no more stock or something. So there's no panic, you know mode going on uh, We had did have that this uh, I hate to say it, we did have that this past year we had a number of weekends where uh, orders came in and whatever we were printing was being shipped out the next morning because the stuff had already been bought and paid for. And it's like, oh, wow, you know, and that's when you really start watching your machines and thinking, please, uh, please don't screw up this now because I won't have time to even recover at that point if something goes wrong. So we've had an interesting and very exciting year. And I really like, I like what happened. Or I like what I see, you know, it's like, this is great. But I guess my biggest problem right now is uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna expand a little bit. But, you know, how big a print farm do you build and then how do you guarantee yourself that, okay, for the next 10, 15, 20 years, whatever, you know, we can still produce parts for 3D printing because, the, you know, the orders, the market is still there. The market's running strong right now. Like I said, it's, I see, I, I, I see a lot of uh, very easy areas where people can move into with 3D printing and start manufacturing parts and selling them to uh, clients online. And those things can vary from everything from the, you know, fidgets to replacement parts for your piano, whatever, you know, just parts, you know, in general. So there's lots of, lots and lots of room out there, I think, at this point. It's kind of like a, the ultimate craft show, you know, it's like, it's just, there's just so much stuff that can be made. And I think there's a lot of demand for a lot of different things. And some of it, uh, you almost create the demand because it wasn't available before and all of a sudden bang now it's available so like yeah you know it's it's all a very good looking market yeah so uh, looking at this year uh 2025 should be really uh an interesting year again for 3d printing i hope kind of waiting for that new bamboo lab machine i keep hearing about that i haven't seen i think they're going to roll it out in february again it, it may or may not be a machine that i can use this one here is uh, a bamboo lab clone and like I said, it's okay. It's, it just doesn't fulfill all my needs or anything. Which sort of brings me to that last little thing that uh, I have heard over and over again. If you're gonna do a 3D printing farm, try to buy you know the same machines over and over again and buy good quality machines that will last a long time, that run a long time with very little maintenance or something. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's ideal <laughs> if you could do it. Uh, I have all different machines. In fact, the machine I'm looking at bringing in that I just talked to you about earlier, is a big machine but again it's another brand name from another company and i can't help that that's uh another problem that i don't like in the uh, 3d printing world is that every time you want a certain custom size or something uh you have to change brand names uh the 256 build plate for example that's fine if you want to buy bamboo lab such as or an sk1 from two trees it's 256 build plate that's great but if you want 300 even you can't buy Bamboo Lab, now you gotta go look at somebody else's machine. And if you wanna get bigger than that, you gotta look at somebody else's machine, you know. Uh, one of the things I do like is the small one, this little Chi 
Chidi has been really good. I, I've got two of their machines right now, and I'm really Im impressed with the uh, build quality, whatever. The uh, best thing that's ever been in here, it's not on display here, obviously, but uh, we've, we've given it the award of Employee of the Month because last year it made thousands of parts. It ran almost entirely for a full year without any trouble at all. And uh, we had one, one problem with it, and that was the power switch. But uh, the longer LK5 Pro, it's a 300 by 300 build plate, and it just kept running like it was just like a clock, I guess you could say. It just was dependable and it ran the prints off over and over and over again. Just unstoppable. And uh, we gave it the employee of the month. And I think uh, if we were gonna do something with uh, one of these printers, we would say the longer LK5 Pro got the uh, award again for the employee of the year or something because it just kept, it's, it's still, even as I speak here right now, the longer, even right now, is knocking out jobs that we're going to be needing until like next week and stuff, and it's knocking it out right now. I just can't say enough about it. It's slow. That's the only thing I've got against it. It's slow, and you really, you can't really push it. You can't speed it up. But uh, as long as you don't speed it up, it's like it consistently just bangs the prints out for you, and it just doesn't seem to need any maintenance hardly at all. Like I said, except uh, that one little. Thing with the power switch but uh other than that uh, the rest of these have had various issues that uh have hit hit me at some point in time with some you know problems and we also had some uh we had uh, was it uh king rune machines probably will probably will never see a king rune machine in here ever again i guess that's a shame but that's you know that's too bad uh creality is fine i love creality machines but you probably will never see them in here uh no particular reason. They just don't have. It just so happens they don't make a printer that's uh, that I can use that applies with me with their pricing structure and whatever. Just don't have a need to have one in here. Uh, oh, the other one, of course, would be I've got the clone here. But uh, Bamboo Lab probably will not ever own a Bamboo Lab machine because there's just no reason to have that 256 build plate. I've mentioned that in the past. It's just. It's unfortunate because I think that they are terrific machines, great for like, you know, a 3D printing farm, but I just don't have the need for them. In fact, if I did, it would be to replace this Cheaty or something. And I really, I don't, the Cheaty doesn't look like it's going to be, you know, going anywhere anytime soon. So uh, going into this year, just the one big printer right now is the only plan I have for 2025. Uh, for 2024, we sort of pushed our way through with what we have, and I've managed to scrape through and keep up with the orders but I think this year uh, we better get the big machine in because I think we're gonna find that we're falling behind uh, because uh, I think it's just gonna be busier this year and if it is we're not ready <laughs> yeah, we're just not ready you know, for that so we better get ready you know. uh, the uh, we almost hit maximum capacity a couple times uh, through last year especially around uh, September October it was like it just got crazy and, and uh, in fact, the only reason it slowed down at all was uh, when the election thing was coming up. It slowed down, obviously, because people were just entirely focused on the election and the election results and whatever to see what was going to happen. And so that sort of helped helped to sort of slow my orders down so I could sort of catch up at that point. Uh, otherwise, as we slammed up, once we got past the elections, all of a sudden the orders started pouring back in again. It was like, oh, here we go. We're back on that, you know, that crazy roller coaster ride. We're you know, we might have a lull for two or three days, and then we got bang, 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 and then a lull, and then bang, 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 you know, it's like, and again, with 3D printing, you better get used to that, because that's probably the nature of the beast. That's probably what's going to happen with most farms, is they're going to see those thing where you have this, uh, you know, really quiet moments, and it's always this, oh, it's the old quiet before the storm hits thing. Yeah, you know, great. Hey, if you enjoy blogging a little bit, this is blog today anyways, uh, I've want, been wanting to kind of, you know, shout out and, you know, talk a little bit about 2025 and also uh, the future of 3D printing. So, you know, where where do we see it going? And uh, <clears throat> I'm sure there's a lot of people have different opinions out there about the situation. So let me know in the comments below. Uh, personally, I think that uh, I'd say we've got five to ten years in front of us for sure. After that, don't know. So anyways, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the notice bell. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of here. Over and out.